Okay, so here's example three with implicit differentiation. So again, um, we just want to find dy dx. Um, so here we have ln y minus 2x equals tangent of x plus y and then plus 1. So uh, again, just like the other two examples uh, that we've done so far, this is from our first video. So um, step one, take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Okay, so d dx of the left equals d dx of the right. Okay, so um, now let's go ahead and work out what this will be. So here we have natural log of y, okay, so we're going to have to do some implicit differentiation here. And remember, uh, implicit differentiation is just the chain rule, okay, that's all it is, just the chain rule. Um, so if you have natural log of a thing, and you want to take a derivative of that, then uh, what's that going to be? Well, derivative of natural log of a thing is 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. Okay, natural log of y, so the derivative is 1 over y times the derivative of y. Remember, that's what the chain rule says. Um, okay, and now minus uh, 2x, the derivative of 2x is just 2. So we have minus 2 here. Um, and that's the left side. What happens on the right side? So here we have a tangent of x plus y. So that's uh, a little tricky, kind of, sort of, not really too bad. But, um, okay, so uh, again, just term by term. So when we differentiate tangent of x plus y, what's going to happen? Well, this is a uh, chain rule thing again, right? So the big guy on the outside is tangent, because that's happening to both the x and the y here. So derivative of the big guy is secant squared evaluated at the little guy. The little guy is x plus y, okay? And now we multiply by the derivative of the little guy. Okay, oops, put this over here. Um, and the little guy is x plus y, so the derivative of the little guy is d dx of x plus y, all right? And then we also have this plus one, but one is just a constant, so its derivative is zero. So this is really a plus zero out here but um, we don't really even need to do that, so let's not. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Uh, 1 over y dy dx minus 2 equals secant squared of x plus y times d dx of x plus y. So let's go ahead and simplify uh, this over here. Um, so we'll leave this as it is for now. 1 over y dy dx minus 2 equals secant squared of x plus y times uh, d dx of x plus y. So again, just differentiate term by term. Um, d dx of x is just 1, right? So derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. All right. Um, OK, and then plus what? d dx of y is just y primed, or dy dx. OK, so if you're looking at this, you should be thinking there's something wrong with it. Um, hopefully you're thinking that, and yeah, there is something wrong. What's wrong? Well, here, um, this needs parentheses around it. Okay, because this entire derivative is being multiplied by the secant squared. So it's secant squared x plus y times the derivative of all this stuff here. So this whole thing in these parentheses here, that's the derivative of x plus y. So we want to be very, very careful about that. Um, you know, stuff like this could drastically change the answer that you get. Um, which could be pretty bad depending on what's going on. But anyway, uh, just always want to be careful with your parentheses and stuff like that. So um, watch out for that. And it is pretty easy to forget, especially for something like this. Um, but again, just uh, be careful and uh, practice lots and lots. And uh, you'll be good. Okay, so now um, we can simplify just a little more. So left side stays the same for now. 1 over y times dy dx minus 2 equals secant squared x plus y. Um, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, sorry. But what I want to do here is distribute secant squared x plus y uh, through these parentheses here. So secant squared x plus y times 1 just gives me this. And then plus, okay, plus uh, secant squared x plus y times dy dx. OK, oops, zoom out a bit. All right, so uh, when we distribute secant squared x plus y into these parentheses here, we end up with this. OK, that's all we did is just distribute. Um, and we have to do that because, remember, step two said get all the dy dx terms 
uh, on one side, everything else on the other side. So um, we have to distribute in order for that to happen. So now, um, now we're ready to do that, actually. So here's 1 over y dy dx. Uh, here's a minus 2, so there's no dy dx. So let's, let's keep this on the left side, and we'll put the minus 2 on the other side. Uh, here's secant squared x plus y, so we'll keep that on the right. And then here's secant squared x plus y dy dx, so we'll put that on the left. So all our dy dx terms are going to go to the left, and everything else uh, goes to the right. So 1 over y times dy dx, uh, and then plus secant squared x plus y times dy dx, so we're going to subtract this from both sides. So on the left side it's now a minus secant squared of x plus y uh, dy dx. Okay, and then equals what? Um, well, here's this, uh, well first, okay, secant squared of x plus y is still there. Doesn't really matter which one we write first, I guess. Uh, and then minus 2 from the left becomes a plus 2. Okay, we're going to add 2 to both sides, so now we have a plus 2 over here. Okay, so um, now we have all our dy dx terms on one side, everything else on the other side, and we're out of room over here. So um, let's erase this stuff up here, and we'll just work our way back up. Okay, so uh, now we can factor out uh, the dy dx. So that what we're going to have left is, uh, well first we have dy dx, and then what's left is uh, 1 over y minus secant squared of x plus y. Okay, and then equals, uh, all this stuff is still the same, secant squared of x plus y uh, plus 2, like that. Alright, and now dy dx times all this stuff equals all that stuff, so divide both sides of the equation by all this stuff, uh, and then dy dx will be by itself. So now uh, dy dx equals um, secant squared x plus y plus 2, all divided by 1 over y minus secant squared of x plus y. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much it, but um, what's unpleasant about this is we have a complex fraction, right? Here's uh, a fraction inside of another fraction, and we don't really like stuff like that. So what we could do is just um, multiply the top and the bottom of the big fraction by y. All right, so we're going to take this whole thing and multiply it by y over y. So then when we distribute the y on the bottom, um, that's kind of going to kill this fraction here, and we'll be, uh, we won't have a complex fraction anymore, and that's good. Um, we just got to be careful about how we distribute it. So is this something we really have to do? Well, it, it depends on your instructor or what you're really doing. Um, but if you can avoid a complex fraction, or if you can simplify it, um, then go ahead and do it. So anyway, we distribute the y on the top. We're going to have... Uh, it's going to be y secant squared of x plus y. Oops. And then uh, plus 2y. And then on the bottom, what do we have on the bottom? 1 over y times y is just 1. And then minus y times secant squared of x plus y. All right, um, and that's a simplified version um, of our answer. So this has no complex fractions in it. And again, if you can avoid complex fractions, go ahead and do it. So here is uh, dy dx. So a little bit more complicated because we had, uh, for in the beginning, we had tangent of x plus y. So that kind of gave us more work to do um, when we had to distribute the secant squared uh, and so on. But again, the idea is pretty much the same. Uh, this, the trick is to remember that implicit differentiation is really just the chain rule. Uh, that's all it is.